Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And as you can see, I am progressing along on the double width, double weave blanket. And I wanted to point out a couple things here. So um, because I have a countermarch loom, and I don't know if all countermarch looms are this way, but I do not have a shuttle race. And that typically has not been a problem. Um, but I have never woven something this long uh, on this loom either. So I was finding that because I ha am having to use a fairly heavy shuttle um, and the shuttle maybe doesn't get all the way across and when it stops, the wool is stretchy and so it kind of sags and it's picking up some threads in that bottom layer that maybe I don't want it to. So I decided that I was going to add a temporary shuttle race to my loom. And you can see here, I have a two by two that my husband had uh, in the garage and I've just clamped it to my beater bar at the bottom of the uh, reed. Now it's a little bit lower than the reed so that it doesn't rub on the wool and abrade it uh, when I'm beating. So that has been a game changer. Um, I'm getting a much better throw on the shuttle because I'm not having to worry about um, if I don't get it across then um, it might you know stop and sag or that it's going to uh, if I throw it incorrectly a little bit hard it's going to dive and fall through the work so that was a big change um, the other thing that I need to do now is because I don't want the knots to interfere with um, the knots on the cloth bar to interfere with the tension in my warp. Um, I'm going to insert a, uh, this is one of my extra um, shaft bars that I don't have installed. So I'm just going to install this down uh, along the knots and that will keep them from poking up and changing the tension. Um, so you could use a warping stick or pretty much, you know, anything um, for this. And I need to loosen my tension a little bit so that I can get that in there. Yeah, there we go. That's better. That will work just fine. All right, so we'll go ahead and continue weaving along. So I have a weaving sword uh, handy so that I can kind of help clear the shed uh, on those sticky warp threads. I'm going to go ahead and start the green. And I found with, uh, it makes it easier to throw the shuttle if I unwind a fair amount of thread or yarn before I throw the shuttle. And that way there's no drag on the shuttle from that yarn trying to pull through and it doesn't slow the shuttle down as much.
as you can see, I am furiously working away on weaving my blanket. Well, maybe not furiously. This is a time-lapse photography, but I am spending most of my days working on it so I can get it done quickly. This took about four days of me weaving um, between three and six hours a day. So it wasn't too bad. It did take some time though to have to stop and wind bobbins all the time um, because I only had four of the large bobbins and I had ordered more from uh, Eugene Textiles and they shipped them right away. But between Eugene and Seattle, they took a detour to Texas via USPS. So thanks for that USPS. And I got them about the time that I took the loom, took the blanket off the loom. Oh well. So I have the final pick of uh, the black in, and I'm going to put in um, some a few picks of scrap yarn to just secure the weft uh, so that it doesn't move around while I am getting off the loom. Um, so I'll just go ahead and, and I'm going to go ahead and do this and double weave also so that uh, we can open it up when um, we take it off the loom, because that's the exciting part. So evidently I got this. Which is fine. I'm just going to So I got that connected. I grabbed the wrong floating salvage. It's fine. I'm not going to mess around with it. I did that a few times when I was weaving um, 
and I had to unweave and take it out, um, but it's really not a problem for just the scrap yarn. Um, maybe what I will do is put in a few more hooks. getting tired. All right, so now we can take it off the loom and um, open it up. So this is the exciting part. So I do know that I'm going to have a fair number of um, repairs on probably the other side because um, it's really hard to uh, figure out if you have a um, if you have a, a thread that is hanging down or in the wrong spot and you end up with skips um, on the underside and it, it's just inevitable at least for me um, I've not done a whole lot of double weaves uh, but I've done enough to know that I end up with skips and it just it is what it is and they're easy enough to repair so we'll go ahead and loosen the tension and um then we'll cut it off so i'm going to um i'm going to leave a fair amount because i'm not quite sure how i'm going to finish it um and so if I leave a lot of weft or a lot of warp, that will give me a lot of options of how to finish the edge. So we'll just go ahead and cut it back here close to the reed. Oh, I my float in salvage. And oh, there went one of my weights. Should be another weight here somewhere. Maybe both of them went. And there's my other weighted uh, repair. And then um, my fishing line floating salvage over here, which I don't want it to go crashing onto the floor, so I'm going to actually pull it up before I cut it. There we go. All right. Okay. So, um, looking at the back, yep, I can see a fair number of skips, um, but like I said, they're to be expected and um, they're easy enough to deal with. Uh, you just have to repair them. There's a pin over here. <laughs> All right. I am super excited about this. There goes my... my floating salvage on that side. And then we can remove our tape measure. 
And then I'll remove these um, repair threads uh, in a couple places. All right, um, now let's take it out into the big room and we'll open it up. Okay, weavers, so I have the blanket off the loom and I have it um, laying out on my floor in the living room and we're gonna get ready to open it up. But I wanted to point out a few things. So this is the front side of the weaving, or I should say this is the top layer of the weaving. Uh, this is the layer that was face up and um, you can see that uh, the twill is going in different directions and all looks good. Uh, I will be trimming all of these um, ends from uh, when I joined uh, threads, but uh, I wanted to show you on the back side. So all of these are where we joined, um, either changed colors or joined um, a new bobbin in with the old bobbin, bobbin. And I'll go through and I'll cut those all off. Um, that's not a big problem. Uh, I have some floats here that will have to be corrected um, now that it's off the loom. And let's find one. Um, oh, here's oh, here's a bad one. Okay, so this right here. Um, evidently, this blue thread, and, and I can pretty much tell you when this happened. Um, this blue thread had um, problems with tension. And uh, I didn't catch the fact that I was having problems with the tension uh, for some time. And I had uh, quite a few skips. So I will have to correct this. So what I'll do is I will go through and I will um, needle weave in a new blue uh, warp thread that goes through here and um, then overlaps just like we did when we're adding a um, weft thread in. Um, we'll split the plies and then overlap them and then once it's wet finished, you won't even be able to see that it was there. Um, there's also a couple of the uh, warp threads that broke. So I had to put in repair threads and we'll have to uh, needle weave those in also. All in all, I think it turned out really well. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Um, I'm gonna need another person's help to do that so that I can open it up and he doesn't count. <laughs> He's just more of a hindrance than anything. Um, so uh, I'll go grab my husband and we will open it up. Okay. All right, so I've got my helper here and we will go ahead and open it up. Moment of truth. Ooh. And there is a double width blanket. <laughs> Hi, Boxer. All right, so um, the uh, yeah. so this is the fishing line that we had in the fold, and uh, that comes out, and you can see how it kept that fold from collapsing in, and uh, once it's wet finished. Um, you won't even be able to tell it was a fold. So we'll go through and find the um, skip threads that need to be fixed and fix those and then wet finish it and we'll be done. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and watching me make the blanket. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and happy weaving.